So number three is about functions f and g defined for x is a set of, uh, x is, belongs to the set of all real numbers, um, and part i is asking us to find the range of f. So here's function f. What you should immediately notice is it is a parabola. Since the domain is all real numbers, that means that the range is going to be defined by the vertex, okay, or the y coordinate of the vertex. And this is an upside down parabola. So just to give you an idea, it looks like this, okay, hopefully more symmetrical than my drawing, which means that the highest point on this parabola is going to be the y coordinate of the vertex, and it's going to go to negative infinity. So let's go ahead and find the vertex. You could do this in one of two ways. You could complete the square, or you could use calculus. I'm going to use calculus because I think it's faster. Okay. All right, so I just substituted y for a function f, a little easier notation. So y prime is equal to 4 minus 4x. So since I'm finding the vertex, the vertex, um, the slope of the line, tangent at the vertex is 0. So I'm going to substitute 0 in, and I'm going to solve for x. So x equals 1. And now I actually need to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, so I plug that back into the original equation. Okay, so 4 times 1 minus 2 times 1 quantity squared. So y equals 4 minus 2, which equals 2. So my vertex is 1 comma 2. All right, that means this point, 2 is the highest, so my range is y is less than or equal to two. Okay, or you could say um, in interval notation the range is negative infinity to two. Either way works. All right, part two says find the value of the constant k for which the equation g of f of x equals k has equal roots. That can also be interpreted as meaning that it has a double root. So the first thing we need to do is get it g of f of k. This means f is going into g. So everywhere I see x in the g equation, I'm going to substitute an f. Okay. And they said that this is equal to k, so I'm going to replace the y with a k, and I'm going to simplify. Uh, so 20x minus 10x squared plus 3. Okay, since we are talking about equal roots, I'm going to go ahead and move k over to the other side by subtracting k. Okay, so um, that equals 0, which is what I need because since we're talking about roots at all and we have a quadratic, I'm going to um, use the discriminant because that's how I tell, uh, well, that's how I can find the value of k. So since it has equal roots, that means the discriminant b squared minus 4ac, this is from the quadratic formula, has to be equal to zero. Um, we've talked about this a lot in class, so I'm not going to go into why that is. So I'm going to just do my substitution. 20 goes in for b. Okay. Uh, minus 4, negative 10 goes in for a. So this is what I'm putting in here, just so you can see what I'm doing. And quantity 3 minus k goes in for c. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify 400 uh, plus 40 times 3 minus k equals 0. So I'm going to subtract 400. By the way, at this point, you could distribute the 40 through if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. This way, I think, is faster. Okay, I'm going to divide by 40. So 3 minus k equals negative 10. Um, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So negative k equals negative 13. So we need positive k, so multiply this by negative 1. So k equals 13. All right. So that is number three. All right, number four. 
Ooh, good coordinate geometry problem. We have point A at 1, 3. We have point B at 3, 1. And we should notice that this is perpendicular here. It says line 1 passes through A and is parallel to OB. So that would be this line here that's not constructed. So these two are parallel. Line 2 passes through B and is perpendicular to AB. So that's why we have this. Uh, the lines 1 and 2 meet at C. Find the coordinates of C. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the equation of line AB. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to find the slope of AB first. So the slope is 1 minus 3 over 3 minus negative 1. Make sure you don't drop your negative by mistake. So we end up with negative half. Okay, um, and actually, I'm not even going to bother finding the equation of this because I don't really, I don't need it at this point. Um, we're looking for the intersection point of C, so the equations I do need are the equations of line 1 and line 2. But I don't really need the equation of AB, so I am not going to write it. What I am going to do is I'm going to note that the slope of BC, since it's perpendicular, is um, 2. Alright, so let's go ahead and write the equation of BC. So 2 is the slope. Okay, and I'm just going to substitute in 1 for y. 2 stays for the slope. 3 is x plus b. So I end up with 1 equals 6 plus b, so negative 5 equals b. Alright, so the slope of, or, so the equation of bc equals 2x minus 5. Alright, there's that one. Okay, I'm going to write the, um, the equation of line 1 now. Um, what is interesting about this is, um, Since AC is parallel to OB, I know the slope of OB is one third, right? Because it's zero, zero, so one minus zero over three minus zero. Um, so the slope of OB is going to be equal to the slope of AC, and that slope is one over three. So I'm going to go ahead and write that equation now. So this is the equation for AC. And the slope is one third. My pen is um, keeps dropping my my writing. So okay, so three goes in for y. One third is the slope. Negative one goes in for x plus b. So I end up with three equals negative one third plus b. So I end up with three and a third or ten thirds equals b. So the slope, or the equation of AC, rather, is um, one third x plus ten thirds. Okay, I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay. So to find C, since C is the intersection point of these two lines, I'm just going to do a substitution. I'm going to sub one in for the other, for one y in for the other y. So basically, I'm going to set them equal to each other. There's one equation. Here's the other. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch the denominator of 3 by multiplying the whole equation by 3. This will just keep it a little neater. I think that's supposed to be a plus sign. There we go. X plus 10. So I multiplied every single term in that equation by 3. And now I'm just going to get all the x's on one side, all the constants on the other. Okay. Add 15. So 5x equals 25 because these are gone. Okay, so x equals 5. Okay, I'm going to pick one of the equations. I'm going to pick the 2x plus 5, or minus 5 equation, the fractions. And I'm going to go ahead and put 5 in. 
everywhere I see x, so right here. All right, so I'm just going to simplify 10 with my pen with stop dropping strokes. So y equals 5. So c has a coordinate of 5, 5. And I'm just going to look really quickly, and this is a good test-taking strategy as you're doing this. I'm going to quickly look back up at my graph and see if that makes sense. Okay, so, oops, wrong color, here we go. So if we want to think about whether or not this makes sense, B had a coordinate of 3, so 5 seems reasonable for the X coordinate. A had a coordinate of 3, okay, so 5 also seems like reasonable Y coordinate for C because it's above A. So I think that that's a reasonable answer.